Welcome back to channel everyone, Triple M here. And today we're unboxing and testing a 70 May Omni 360 dash cam. Now this is the world's first ever 360 dash cam. A ton of features, 360 view, AI motion detection, superb HDR vision, full 1080p video. It does have built-in GPS as well as ADAS and we'll get into what that means in here in a little bit. And last but not least, this has voice control. So no need to actually go into the app for certain functions. Simply talk to it and it will do what you need it to do. So shout out to 70 May for sponsoring this video. In this video, we're gonna unbox it, set it up, put it to the test. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, smash the notification bell. Let's go. I love the presentation that they have going. Uh, hello, I am Makes. Make. <laughs> Pretty sure I'm mispronouncing that. But here's the unit itself. And let me just put it to the side for now. And uh, let's see what else is in the box. So we have a little door right here. It did include another packet. This is gonna have a couple accessories. For one, it's gonna have uh, the uh, setup guide, user's manual. So this is gonna tell you everything they basically need to know about installation and operation. They also included two anti-static um, clear pads and of course these are essential in my opinion just to if you ever wanted to remove it it won't leave anything on your windshield and they also added an extra two-sided sticky so just in case you have to put in another vehicle or remove it for whatever reason you have an extra one laying around so we have some accessories i think this is going to be the charger and the charging cable Yep, empty. So here's the charger. You can see it has two USB ports, one designated for the um, dash cam. And besides that, it looks like a standard 12 volt charger. All right, so we have a prying tool, and this, of course, is to do some wire management. So running the cable along the panel of the car. So uh, this should be helpful just hiding that cable. And we have a very long USB-A to USB-C um, cable. And this is of course gonna support power for your dash cam. So this is one option to power. So this will power it while you're in your vehicle, but also they did send a hard wiring kit and this will give you standby time parking. So it will essentially uh, connect to your system battery and then once it reaches a certain voltage, it should shut it down just to keep your battery from dying. So let's open that up does come with a user's manual put that to the side for now and you can see here's the wiring kit um, this one is pretty straightforward again so at the end you're gonna have a USB-C for the dash cam but also you have uh, the regulator and this essentially is gonna just like I said make sure your dash cam doesn't drain your battery all the way down you have accessory which is yellow you have your voltage, so this is going to be a battery connection, and then you have your ground. Um, just these three, and like I said, uh, this guy will, will do the rest as far as just making sure the voltage that's supplied doesn't totally destroy your battery. I think this is a separate purchase, but definitely an option if you want your standby mode, parking mode. So as far as the unit itself, pretty small, fits in the palm of my hands, uh, looks premium, it was well protected, and overall I like the design of this. So around here you can see there's a plastic to protect the screen. Three buttons on this unit, you have a, a power button, then you have up and down buttons. And what this does is basically lets you go through the limited functionalities of the device, and we'll go over that here in a little bit. The rest of the design is pretty straightforward. You can see there's a USB-C on the side for power. The top part is gonna be where you mount to the anti-static sheet for your windshield. And this part also pivots up and down and this is needed because not all windshields are mounted at the correct angle so once you mount this in place you should be able to tilt it back and forth just to get the perfect view for your system you're also going to have the camera that rotates obviously you do have a speaker on the bottom and a microphone up top to where you can talk into the unit and you can also hear various things that's happening while you're driving 
So let's go over some of the main specifications and features of this camera. So this is a 360 camera in sense, but the actual rotation is only 340 degrees, but that's paired with a 140 degree field of view. So you do get a full view around your car. So camera, as we discussed, is 140 degrees. The lens is a f1.5 aperture. So essentially this camera should be able to capture any angle in your vehicle from front to back to the inside to the outside of your car. You do have an omni image sensor. Inside there's an internal battery. 100 milliamp hour battery and use the term battery loosely because this is more of a capacitor it doesn't entirely power your device up so if you unplug this from your cigarette light or from your fuse box however you decide to set this up it will not maintain power to the device what it'll do instead is give the unit enough time to finish the recording and shut it down safely so this battery cannot be used independently as far as storage these are built-in storage so no SD card you have three different sizes 32 64 and 128 gigabytes so at checkout, you do get to decide what storage size you want. And speaking of the unit, you do have two color options. You have the black version, which you're seeing here with the red buttons, but also going to have a white and red version. Uh, maybe if you want the camera to be more noticeable, that option will be there for you. Now, this also has built-in GPS. It has various voice commands, which we'll cover. Built-in Wi-Fi, and you do use the 70My app, which we'll cover here in a little bit. Please connect your app to activate the dash cam. When the unit is first powered up, you will not be able to use it right away. You will need to download the 70My app. Then you'll need to go ahead and register it with an email and we'll send a confirmation that way you can start using it with the application. And that's essentially how you activate it as well. Now the activation is pretty straightforward. Once you activate the device, there's a nice trailer animation and i think this only happens on the first setup so pretty cool that i was able to capture that and then it gives you the option to go ahead and start using it now the app has two main areas that you'll be interacting when one's going to be the device management the other one's going to be to interact with your media so within device management you're going to have all your features and settings you're going to have your encoding format and this is going to give you high resolution low resolution so you have resolution you have 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second at 1080p and uh the distinction between that is that when you have 30 frames per second, you have HDR options. However, when you have 60, you do not, but you do have smoother recording in my opinion. You also have the option to turn off your latitude, longitude, watermarks, as well as your speed and your 70 mile logo on your video recordings. You have the hotspot option, your detection uh, during parking mode. So you can set that up if you have parking mode and you do have your parking security. And again, you have to have the parking option enabled uh, for this to work. ADAS settings, which we'll go over here in a little bit. You have your screen standby mode, auto off, when the movement is persisted wi-fi connection settings your dash cam time and date format speed unit so you can change that to mile per hour or kilometers per hour you also have about and synchronization options so the second area is going to be uh, the wi-fi connection below so once you connect to the Wi-Fi of the dash cam. This is where you'll be able to not only see a live preview, but also see the footage that you're recording. And they did a good job just making sure they have uh, different ways to display it. You can put overlays on it, and you can also download it directly from this area. There's also a quick setup guide just showing you how to connect the dash cam, how to use the anti-static sheet, how to mount the dash cam, how to adjust it. So uh, cool to know that this is also built into the application. Now, once you get into the application, you can see you do have a left and right. So you can essentially uh, rotate the camera just using those arrows. So once you got it set up to the car, you can put it in the perfect position where your hood is centered and that will make for better visibility while you're driving. As far as the settings on the actual unit with the buttons, you do get some limited functionality. You have your mute record, you have your Wi-Fi information, you have your watermark, you can turn that on and off as well. You can also go into your settings, you can format, you can reset, uh, regulatory information, and then you can go back to the main menu. So like I said, not a lot of options within the camera itself, but nice to know that if you're in a bind, you can quickly disable watermark or turn off the microphone and so on and so forth. So just following the installation instructions from the application, I picked the best spot for my uh, setup. Like I said, some people put it in the middle of the windshield, some to the right. I went ahead and put mine to the left. I do have a, another unit in the front and I, I just felt like that was the best place. Also for my installation, I will not be using the hardwire kit. Instead, I'll be using a 12 volt supply. That way when I'm driving, I'll have recording. So using the anti-static sheet, when put that on the windshield at first, then I put the dash cam to position where it needed to. Then I ran the USB-C all the way down to the cigarette lighter, plug it in and I was good to go.
Now, ADAS, or Advanced Driver Assistance System, allows a couple different functions within this application in this dash cam. So first, it's gonna have lane departure. If you're drifting out of your lane, it will go ahead and let you know that you're swerving left or right. It also has pedestrian detection, so someone's walking in front of your vehicle will alert you. And last but not least, it does have front vehicle alert. So if you're getting too close to a vehicle, it will alert you as well. Here's a look at those functions in action. Attention to pedestrians. Lane departure. As I mentioned in the intro, this also has voice commands. So literally you can talk to the unit, tell it what to do and it will record. So most notable, you can tell it to shoot left, shoot right, take photo, take selfie, shoot vlog, or you can tell it to shoot inside. And how these works is once you give it a voice command, it will record or do whatever you tell it to do for 10 seconds, then it will go back to the original position. Here's some of those functionalities in action as well. Shoot left. Shoot right. Take photo. Take selfie. Shoot vlog. Get ready to say hi to the camera. Shoot inside. So for my recording, I did leave it on full HD at 60 frames per second. Just makes for better video, the smoother, the more frames you have, the more detail you're gonna have in your recording. So I went ahead and left that on. So here's a look at some sample footage. It's gonna include some daytime, some nighttime. In the comments, let me know what you think of the picture quality. So when it comes to viewing your video, getting your video off the camera, you need to connect to the camera through the Wi-Fi connection and to the application on your smartphone. So once you get into the settings, I love how they did this. They have different color codes for different timestamps. So if there's an incident or if there's just standard recording, if there's a vlog, if there's just a photo, it will let you know by the color code. So that way it's easier to go through what you need to go through and pull your footage accordingly. Now, very cool, and I, I think this is a great addition, is once you get into the video, they do have a very cool overview overlay that gives you your speed and some other information but also gives you your distance and how it does this is really cool it gives you the lane departure guidance it gives you the distance from the vehicle in front of you objects pedestrians and i think if they were able to integrate this into the live view that would be pretty cool they also have a different view where you can just go through your catalog go through your different videos you can scroll up see what you're interested in see what you might want to download couple features that I was not able to cover just because it required the hard wiring was the actual monitoring. So once it's in parking mode, it will do a time shift. It will take a certain frames per second to conserve battery, but also records motions and actions as they happen. So with this, it will detect motion and it will automatically adjust the camera to where that's coming from. So it will let you know 
in the video overview if this is a threat, if this is uh, not threatening, or just uh, general motion around the vehicle. My overall conclusion is I love this unit. I love the fact that it is 1080p. Uh, that just takes a lot of the file size out of uh, the 4K video. I feel like sometimes 4K dash cams are overkill. Even though it's 1080p, picture quality is great. High bit rate. Just to give an idea of how much a file size is. One minute equals to about 180 megabytes. Integrated memory, which could be pro and con, whichever way you look at it. Uh, on one end, if you had the removable memory, you, you would be able to pop out the memory and put it into your SD reader and copy it to your computer, which makes your life a lot easier. However, with the internal memory, what you're gonna have is just more stable, more stability with your footage and you don't have to have the guesswork of which memory card to use and when a memory card is going bad. So that's the trade-offs in my opinion. Also love that this is a 360 camera. This is different than anything we've ever seen. This kind of eliminates the need to have a camera in the front and camera in the back because you have a system that can do both. As far as two of my negatives, I do feel like because you have to rely on the application to pull your footage. It takes a longer time for you to get footage off uh, the unit to your phone because you have to depend on that camera and that Wi-Fi connection. So it takes a good minute to download footage. So hopefully that's something they'll work on. Maybe give the option to plug into a computer or something and get the record to the files. That can save a lot of time. Also the battery, internal battery. I wish there was some standby parking with the internal battery. Uh, battery itself does not provide any recording time as I mentioned earlier. However, what it does, it maintains the basic operation of the camera camera like the shutdown animation the default settings and the basic functions so even if your battery is depleted completely time may be reset however your footage will always be saved and that will not be affected so that's at least good to know besides that this is a great unit i would definitely recommend it i'll link it in the description uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment section if you're new to the channel subscribe thank you for watching and i'll catch you on the next one